Welcome to another episode of the Teaching Tidbits series. Um, this time we are very happy to have Professor Juno Moro, who is an assistant professor in the Media Design uh, Unit from the Humanities Department. And um, Professor Moro is going to be sharing with us a very interesting topic. So, um, you know, Juno, tell us what. Uh, what you're implementing, what you're doing in the classroom. So, yeah, I want to talk about novel strategies for classroom engagement. And uh, I think everyone knows nowadays that we're like constantly distracted. Um, we have like notifications happening all the time, you know, not only on our phones, but on our computers and everything is just fighting for your attention. And so it's a lot harder to pay attention now than it ever has been in the past. I. Personally, when I was growing up, I had um, undiagnosed ADHD, and so, like, in high school classes, I would sleep through literally every class, literally every day. Um, teachers would call me sleepy, was, um, because I was so understimulated in the classroom, um, I just couldn't pay attention no matter how hard I tried. I understand how hard it is to stay engaged with classroom material. <laughs> So a lot of times I see, if I start seeing students, um, I start losing them, right? So like I'm, I'm talking for probably too long and I see students start, maybe like one's checking their phone or maybe one is like going for a bathroom break or, you know, someone just like, oh, I need to check my email really quick or, and suddenly no one knows what's going on in the classroom. So they don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on because I'm paying attention to them, not paying attention to me. Um, and so, Anytime I start feeling that, I try to think about like, what can I do to make students more engaged? I like physical movement. Um, I like to do my own physical movement and I like students to physically move. Sometimes I'll have like, for instance, um, for one project, I have students pick uh, constraints from a list. So they have to have like uh, certain kinds of themes that they have to follow for their projects. And so I have students vote for which constraints they would like to use as a class. So I have everyone stand up, move to the back of the room, and then they have three votes. To vote is to physically move to like the next step in the classroom, which might be like five feet forward. You know, I just made this up because I wanted students to feel like they could engage in a way that was not just listening, not just answering like a question. Um, so I always like to move around the classroom myself. I'll try to do all kinds of weird things, you know, like just like go off camera or something and then suddenly people are like, wait, what the hell is going on? And they start like trying to pay attention again because they want to know what's going on. Mm. The more routine it gets, the less people are able to pay attention because they expect what's going to happen and they feel like they don't need to. Another thing is that sometimes it's hard to know if students grasp material. So I teach programming classes and sometimes um, students, you know, you ask like, does anyone have any questions? Does everyone feel comfortable with the material? And it's crickets chirping. And so one thing I try to do is I try to do like a temperature check where I have them give me like one to five fingers um, to indicate how comfortable they feel with the material. Like five being very comfortable, one being I don't know where I am. So a lot of students that don't feel like comfortable engaging verbally have an, another way to engage. They don't want to feel alone because now everyone has to participate and everyone has, and I can get a feel for the room. And a lot of times when you hear nothing, it's like the worst. That's when students feel so lost, they don't even know what their questions are or their question is, what are we talking about? Something really basic. I like to inject playful competition into my classes. So a lot of people don't like competition. I personally like to have competition in my classes. At some point in the class, after we go over the lesson, we do an example, and then I come up with some kind of challenge. So they have to apply the material in a new way, and they have maybe 10 minutes to complete this. If any student can complete this challenge in the 10 minutes, then they get maybe one point of extra credit on their final grade, which they're all like, oh wow, that's important, right? The final grade. And so they go about um, trying this, and then after five minutes, no one's gotten it. So then I escalate it to two points of extra credit. So suddenly, 
they feel like even more incentive to engage with the material, to try to think um, critically and be creative in coming up with a solution to the problem I've given them. Yeah, so like anytime I get bored in the classroom myself, I know the students are bored and I know that I need to like make something interesting happen right then, you know, like sometimes it's just like doing jumping jacks or something or yeah, so that's that's some of the strategies that I try to use in the classroom. How complex is that, you know, adding all of these activities to make sure that then it doesn't interfere with the content that you're teaching? A lot of times we try to squeeze too much into our lessons for the class. And so I could try to like squeeze in the extra material into the class and no one's paying attention. No one's getting it. At the end of the day, students don't know what they learned that day. Uh, or I can cut some of the material and I can make sure that students are engaged with it. They are thinking about what is happening in the classroom and then all the students are gonna get it. So sometimes it's a matter of just you have to think about like what the priorities are and like do I want students do I want to rush through everything and students to get nothing or do I want to keep students engaged and have them really deeply understand the material that we cover if I am a, a colleague a faculty member that you know is interested interested in applying what you've done what would be the advice that you would provide um, there are also some products that I like that are like sort of off-the-shelf products that you can use in your class. There's one called um, Kahoot, which is um, something that is sort of like a quiz game where um, there's a question on like a projector. We have the question up in the class and then students like log in with their phones um, and they have to choose the correct answer from that um, the options on the screen. So they're like engaging in multiple ways. And this is a really great product for um, getting students engaged with the material because it's competitive also. So it has like a, a scoreboard at the end of every question and like celebrates students. There's music, there's a lot to it. And so that's something that like people could get started with right away. But I would just say like, don't be afraid to try new things in the classroom because sometimes, you know, you might not come up with a great idea, but until you try it, you won't know what really works. I think just make your classes fun, fun for you, fun for your students, and then other things will fall into place. All of these approaches that you have taken and, and uh, applied, how did it change in the way that you teach, in the way that you perceive the pedagogical approaches? How did it change? For me, the biggest thing is that I'm engaged with what I'm teaching. I'm having fun by just being active and not just lecturing at the front for like an hour. If I'm engaged, students are engaged. If students are engaged, I'm engaged. And so it creates a feedback loop in which we're all enjoying the class. And I think that's the most powerful thing. With this note on making sure that we create an engagement loop for the students and for the faculty, um, it's, it's a great advice. And uh, until the next time when we meet for another Teaching Tidbits episode. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juno. Thank you.